ジラゴジラゴジラテスラゴジラゴジラゴジラテスラゴジラ Hello everybody, Tesla Gojira here, and today I'm playing some more Rip Tail. I actually just beat this game about 10 minutes ago, and so I wanted to upload a video of me beating the final boss. And I figured I'd also include all the other bosses leading up to the final boss. So once this game is released tomorrow, if anyone's stuck on them, they'll know how to beat them. So let's get right into this. If you start with anything other than the underground forest, I highly recommend you just restart. And wait, okay, there's the second try. Sometimes it takes multiple times because it's random, but I highly recommend you start with the underground forest because all of the hardest enemies. Obviously, I'm already dying because I'm already trying right now. Alright, l you see that big dragon there? That dove looking fish dragon? This guy I'm dodging? They are pains in the ass to beat. And just imagine, I, one of them's bad enough. Imagine having five or six of them all in the same room. It's nearly impossible to get through unscathed. They have nerfed them quite a bit. They used to be a lot, lot harder. But as the development process went on, they realized that they were way too OP. And it's doable now. You kind of want to use a preemptive strike on these guys. But anyway, this, the point of this video isn't about the,、uh, the dungeons leading up to the bosses. I just figured I'd mention that because it's a big deal. Getting through those guys. So, without further ado, here's the bosses. If you took my advice and go with the underground forest first, first boss you'll face is this guy, b a r n e s s the fire dragon. He has three different attacks. Expect him to do this one right here first. That's what he usually does, but it's not always what he does. Followed by, he has two different attacks after this. He's got this, like, spraying fire. Followed by more fireballs. It's always three bursts of four fireballs. And then he'll switch and do something else. He'll either do these swooping attacks, which he does, I believe, four of them, or five of them. And then he'll follow on with his three bursts of four fireballs. And after that, it could be the swooping attacks again, or it could be the raining fire again. See, that time it was the raining fire. You just gotta listen. And you sit where I sit, either on that side. On the right side or the left side, it doesn't matter which. Just pick your side. You can try to get those two additional attacks here.、Um, but you just, you hear that first swoop. That, that's when you know you need to use that homing attack, followed by, again, the four, or the three groups of four fireballs.、Um, so if you wait, you could, you could hear the fire burning. That's how you know it's going to be one of the raining fire attacks. And then you can. Keep following up with extra attacks in there if you like.、Um, the biggest thing with this guy, when you're doing the level leading up to him, just try and get a homing. A homing gem is your first,、uh, your first gem. That's going to make a world of a difference, especially when he's doing the swooping attacks. But it is possible to do without it. Just a hell of a lot easier with the homing attack. So, yeah, that is it for the underground forest. The F. The、uh, first dungeon you beat, and the first dungeon you beat, no matter which one it is, will always result in a health increase. Alright, another one of the bosses in this playthrough, my second one, was the Crypt. In the Crypt, you'll always fight this guy, who's actually the easiest in my opinion. And again, homing, homing gems can help you or not, but it's Chrysanos the Necro Dragon. I believe, yeah, I had a homing gem for my first gem on this go around. It makes it easier and harder, kind of, depending on how you look at it. The homing gems will help you destroy his minions that are always flying around. And then you just kind of just chain, especially if you're good at the chains, just keep chaining his minions, and eventually, just like that, you see I got like three or four strikes in on him. If you get one of his minions next to him as he teleports around, you can do a lot of damage. But honestly, just make your main focus killing his minions, and eventually you'll do damage to him too.、Um, the only other thing I really want to mention though is his fireballs there. You can attack them as well.、Um, it won't hurt you if you attack them, it won't break your chain if you attack them. I just took some damage there. I could have got the achievement for beating him without any damage taken if I didn't screw up there. But yeah, this is a pretty quick battle. He's pretty easy to beat. And then, once you defeat your second boss, regardless of who it is, you'll always get an additional gem slot. So now I can have up to four gems 
and you, you get a regular horizontal strike, but you just have to go to the shop and buy another replacement gem and you throw it in whatever you want. Which brings us to our third and final of the bosses leading up to the main boss, and that's the Kareel Fire Guard Twins. These guys I had the hardest time beating at first until I learned the secret, and that's just to stay low. I used to bounce around on top and try to hit them as they jumped over me, but I realized, um, also with a tip from the developer himself, or one of the developers I should say, he told me to stay low, and that paid off. As you can see, they've got a decent pattern. If you don't want to stand directly in the middle, because when they jump over, they after they do this crossfire stuff, you'll see. Oh, I already killed him. But you'll see the one guy that jumps over from right to left. He'll throw. He'll sometimes throw a fireball straight down, or it always lands in the center. So you want to stay either to the left a little bit or to the right a little bit. I prefer to the right because they are moving in a counterclockwise motion that'll give you more distance, more time to react. After you beat the third guy, you get an additional heart, which will also fill up your health, regardless of how much damage you had, giving you six hearts to face the final dude. Once you make it through the ancient ruins, you'll get to this last guy here. So, you've come to finish what you've started, Merceos. You've caged your own creations inside the earth, but we have been freed. You can't run from your sins anymore. This ends now. York, the Dragon Overlord. Alright, this guy's got three different attacks. He's got this falling rock attack. He has... Let's see if he does it. He's got this sideways fire stream attack. And his other one... Oh, here's the rock attack again. Oh, I took damage there. His other one is this one here. You can see for a split second you'll see the ground glow red. Those are where the beams are going to shoot up. He's doing it again. So, the key to this one is paying attention to the words he says there. Those little dragonborn shouts, I guess. When he starts sitting there shaking like he's going to sneeze, that's when he does the sideways fireball. All you have to do is get on that top platform and you're good. The, ca uh, the one that ends with Re is the firing straight up in the air. And then you see he's about to sneeze, his fire, so just get up there as soon as possible. Again, with the sneezing. Uh, that, that, that's what it looks like to me. It looks like he's prepping for a really explosive sneeze. And then Muguru, that's the one where the rocks fall from the ceiling, so just pay attention to that last word, Ru. That means that they're it's going to fall from the ceiling. And there's really no predicting where those are going to be. Just kind of pick a spot and hope for the best. More rocks from the ceiling. Boom! Victory is mine! This is not what I wanted. Mankind was not ready for you. Fear took a hold of them and they forced my hand. It was either you or me. Turns out they paid the price as well. I didn't want for you to suffer. I thought maybe if I just left you alone you would be fine. I wouldn't have to face what happened. Time is a way of healing wounds, but some cuts go too deep. Yours was a road of trials, but now you don't have to fight anymore. I wonder if all creation is destined to die. As this chapter ends, I'm forced to look towards the next sunrise. Goodbye, old friend. And that is it! Riptail! By far the best platformer I've played since Mega Man on the original NES. Um, yeah. So, that's it. All I have left to do now is to keep playing, try to get the rest of the achievements as far as beating some of the levels without taking any damage, which is going to be a pain in the ass, but worth it. And then there's also a hard mode where you can go through the entire game with only a single heart. So I'm not sure if you'll still get an additional heart beating the first guy, or if it'll just cap you at one the entire game. If you can get to a total of three hearts, maybe that's doable. But one the whole game, I think that's going to be really, really hard. But we'll see. I'll try it out one of these days. But, uh, yeah, this is the game. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope this helps you if you guys start playing it and get stuck on those bosses. 
Um, I know it's really frustrating to have to beat the entire thing again, especially once you get to like the third or the ancient ruins and you start getting wrecked. You have to redo everything that you just did. But yeah, that's the end of this video. My little boss fight tutorial, I guess you could call it. Hope it helps you out. As always, thanks for watching. Tesla Gojira. Ow!